Yes, please. Do you know where that be? Hello, can everybody hear me? Yes. Hello? Yes, yes. Can you hear me, Brenda? Yeah, I can hear. I'm not sure if everyone else can hear me. Uh, yes, they hear you, but uh, I think they can't see the chat. I don't know why. So just start and I will record the session. Um, my name is Brenda D'Souza. I work for Radford. Hopefully you can see the screen before me. If you can't, then please use the chat facility that's available and I'll answer any queries that you may have in terms of logistics and any questions you may have during the course of this session. So hopefully everyone can hear me. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you regarding Radford's compensation survey for the Belarus IT sector. And what we're going to cover in the next 45 minutes is who we are and what we do. Um, talk about our initiative that we're launching this year uh, for the Belarus market. Um, go through our simple job matching methodology and talk you through our data collection, which is very easy. And we'll close with our proposal um, going forward. And we obviously want to work with companies like yourself in terms of providing compensation data for the Belarus market. Feel free to ask questions as we go along. I have today with me my colleague, Stasia, who is fluent in Russian. And so she'll support us with any questions that you may have in, in, in Russian and English. Great, thank you, Stasia. Hopefully everyone could hear her. Great. Okay, so in terms of we are we are Aon, we're uh, an insurance, we're the largest insurance broker firms. We specialize in certainly insurance brokerage, um, risk management and so forth, but we also specialize in HR solutions. And where Radford comes in, we come under the Aon firm and we provide market data specifically for the tech sector, as well as life sciences sector. Aon also provides financial services market data through McLagan, who you may have heard of as well. But we all come under the, the firm umbrella Aon. In terms of what we do, um, really, you know, we recognize companies face challenges in terms of their day-to-day -day and managing their workforce and why do companies use market data and come to Radford? Well certainly you want it allows you having access to this intel allows you to measure competitive your competitive programs and developing new plans or you may be redesigning existing programs um, to ensure greater effectiveness. It also helps you to retain your top performers um, and your key talent within the market, particularly in the tech sector, which is very hot. And, and certainly we see trends in terms of a lot of movement by, by country. Also, having access to market data will allow you to support recommendations to your senior management, your compensation committee, or your board presentations with specific data from peer companies. But certainly having access to online data allows for quick response time to any ad hoc queries that you come across in your day-to-day -day work. So 
in terms of um, what we do, we provide PR solutions and we also provide market day in terms of compensation pay data specifically for the tech sector. Radford's been running a tech survey for the last 40 years. Um, it started 40 years ago, um, mainly in the US, and we've, when we've broadened out on a global basis, we have over 2,000 companies participated in our survey with over 6.3 million incumbents covering across 88 countries. So we provide market data for Russia where we have over 158 companies. We have data for Ukraine where we have over 50 companies. Czech Republic um, is another um, country where we provide market data with over 100 companies in, in our survey. And we collect data from base salary, any cash incentives in terms of bonus, and also we collect data for equities, your long-term incentives as well. I'm going to pause here. If there's any questions, feel free to ask now or submit your questions on the chat panel. I'm hoping people can hear me. <laughs> okay, our objective is to grow our survey participation in Belarus. And right now, that's our initiative, and we want to partner with organizations such as yourself to participate. Um, and we cover, we cover, you know, um, countries like Russia and Ukraine, but obviously we would like to, to some we would like to collect data for Belarus market, hence why we're launching this initiative. So some of the target companies we have approached, and, and some of those companies will be present on today's webcast. The companies listed in green are already confirmed participants for 2016 survey participation for Belarus. So you probably recognize yourselves on this list. I'm going to pause right now. In terms of our survey, we run a rolling survey. And what that means is companies have the ability to um, look at market data on an up to date basis. It's not a fixed date survey. So we publish market data quite frequently, every three months to be precise, and that way companies um, can access data all year round. I'm just going to go through our job methodology. It's a simple four-step process. I'm going to use the example here for a software quality assurance engineer. So, for example, if we were to match a software Q&A engineer, we would need to, first of all, step one, would be assign the functional area. And these are typical functions that you would associate in any given organization. In this case, it's product development and engineering. Step two would be assign the category. So assigning whether they are a professional or they are executive or support in your organization. Step three would be assign the job family. So we have a set of industry standard job descriptions that really summarizes the key responsibilities of that job within your organization. And this is coded as 518. The final step is the level of the job. In this case, it's level three. So, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But the next few slides really go into the detail behind each of these steps. For example, one of the areas that we cover within the Radford Technology Survey. So, you'll notice we have HR finance and marketing 
but because this is an IT specific industry survey, we'll also cover your IT development type jobs in the survey, as well as your IT technology, data management, your help desk type roles, your e-commerce type roles will also be covered in the survey. So, Plural Matrix is a tool to help companies identify jobs. So, if you're very new to Radford and you don't know what's the best way to start when it comes to matching your own internal jobs against Radford survey job descriptions, this tool will allow you to identify the key jobs and the corresponding job families. So, for example, if we take our, our example software Q&A engineer, you would match it to development engineering it's on the left hand side of the screen and here you would see typical jobs associated within the development engineering family and then of course under professional individual contributor we have typical titles that's associated at that level. And as you can see software Q&A engineer it's just listed here at the bottom. Feel free to ask questions on the chat um, or feel free to ask questions by, by audio. Assign the category of the job, and here we collect data from your executive population in your organization right through to support levels. And, and this is the language we define how do we define a manager in the survey? Three would assign the job family, so we have a set of job descriptions. In the blue box, we have a software Q&A engineer, which lists the duties, the key primary responsibilities of that job, and it's listed here. So in this case, it's software Q&A engineer, and the job code would be 518. The step is assigning the level of the job. So this chart really illustrates a, a high to low pay matrix in terms of where levels of organization. So of course, if you're an executive, it demands a higher level of pay, but some of your support technicians would come under the support ladder, so they'll be further down in terms of the pay scale. But these are the levels that we define, and it's really reflective on the last digit of the job code. Professional individual contributor level, so this goes into the in detail how we describe a level three. And we've defined six levels, and each level really describes the know-how, how complex the job is, the supervision, and the experience necessary to do the job. And so we've summarized for each level. In this case, it's looking at Career level three, and we describe in detail what what um, exactly they need to be performing to do that job. It's not the person; it's the job we're looking at within the organisation. example of an output um, when you do your matching and you use our online tool it's the Radford network here it's looking for a job it's a software Q&A Pro professional levels one to five for Russia so it's in local currency and here you can base salary 
giving you the average, but it will give you the 20, the lower quartile, the medium, and the upper quartile. It'll, it will also give you, how, indicate how robust the data is. So it will give you the number of employees matched, incumbents, and the number of companies matched by each job and level. So we have a, a question, um, thank you. So is it possible to see the whole report and how it looks like? Yes, of course, we can do that. Um, just bear with me. I'm just going to quickly go on to our Radford network. Fingers crossed it works. Just bear with me. Here we have our online platform. Companies have the ability to um, look at market data by country. In this case, I'm just going to go into comp totals. And I'm just going to choose a country. Here we have the list of countries. And I'm going to choose a country. Let's go into Russia. And here you can look at specific jobs. So, for example, let's choose HR. And I'm just going to choose a HR business partner because we're all HR professionals on this on this webcast, most of us. And so here it's going to pull up the market data. Just bear with me. So here we have a snapshot of the role. It describes in detail. Hopefully you can see that on your screen. A HR business at level two, and it will give you the um, reported compensation elements. It's looking at base salary. It's looking at any applicable allowances. Obviously, it will report on fixed comp, which is a combination of base and total allowances. And then, of, of course, we collect long-term incentives for those companies that do provide that to employees. So this is just a, a, a example of how we report the job. It's also available in Excel as well. But I'm not going to go into too much detail on our network, Radford Network Tool, because we're in the process of upgrading, and that will be available in October. So just going back, I hope that answered your question, um, Irene, I believe. So hopefully it's answered that. I'm just going to go back to the presentation. Here's another example. It's called an express report. And it's a data display tool functionality that is in use. And you would just click in the function. And then you would select a job to view. In this case, it's looking at development engineering management level three it will give a description but if i go to the next page it will actually give me the example but again it's looking at base salary right through to total direct compensation and you can actually look at in terms of incentives look at actual versus target incentives in your organization you can also look at new hires New hires is defined less than 12 months, 12 months service within your organization or ongoing. And then, of course, in terms of LTIs, you can look at target versus actual. So this is an example of how the market data is, is shown. So our proposal, so let me do our Excel input sheet which is very simple and hopefully you can see it clearly but it's a simple excel spreadsheet in terms of what we're going to collect um so let me just bear with me part of being a participant in our surveys 
you will have access to the market data and um, whatever countries you need. In this case, we're launching Belarus, um, and so we hope to provide market data very soon, subject to companies like yourself submitting data. We'll provide full training, and um, this is available because we want to ensure good quality matching, um, and, and so we can report back in terms of high quality compensation data. And of course, we'll assign you a Radford survey consultant who will work with you going forward. Here's an example of trends. I want to know what's the base pay projections for, say, Russia or Ukraine. Then this report will give you that. We run this report every three months, and companies complete this. And here you can see. Um, for two, 2016, the actual base pay increase, looking at overall population versus sales population. So here you can see for Russia, the overall base pay increase at medium level is 8.9 for Ukraine. And it will also tell you what was the actual increase reported this time last year for 2015, and it was overall 8%. Another example of trends, we collect information on employee turnover. So if you recognize you have a retention issue within your organization and you want to benchmark your company against other companies, then this is a useful um, information to have in terms of turnover, workforce status. So here we'll look at attrition levels by country, so here we'll tell you overall versus voluntary. So as you can see for Czech Republic, right now it's tracking at 16.2% at medium. Whereas if I look at Germany within the IT population, overall attrition level is tracking at 10.1%. I'm going to pause if there's any questions. Feel free to use the chat facility. OK, so in terms of our data collection, what we're asking companies is to provide their data once a year. That's all you need to do. And we're collecting full-time employees. For the benefit of this initiative for Belarus IT market, we're just collecting simple information in terms of base salary, bonus, and any allowances. So in effect, it's a, it's a total cash survey. Um, we're not collecting long-term incentives right now. Um, that's, we'll probably collect that in year two. But for the first year participation, it's a cash survey only we want to make the process very simple and allow companies um, to submit their data in an easy format. All data will be treated confidentially, of course, and, and data will be sent not via email, but sent via our, our platform, Survey Secure, that would upload your Excel file. So I'm just going to go to our input sheet. Here we have, um, it's a simple sheet, and it's also um, in, in your local language. So obviously, we would collect basic information about your company. Of course, we would collect your population in Belarus. And if I click on Belarus, here we have. The next column looks at your local currency, Russian ruble. And then we will collect your incumbent IDs, your employee IDs, for your, for your staff in your organization. Now, you may not want to use your own company IDs, and that, that's fine. Um, you can use an alternative number. We just ask for a reference number just so we can go back and ask you any specific questions. 
if I move along, um, we collect industry code. So um, we have various sub industries. You may specialize in the telecom sector, so you will click on communications, products, slash services. You may specialize in the software industry, and that's fine. You may specialize in the internet e commerce sub industry, and that's fine too. So you would have you would select the industry that's applicable to your own organization. So date of hire we collect, so when an employee joins your organization, um, any new hire bonuses applied, that's less than 12 months service. Of course, here we have um, the, the survey job code and it generates the title. So I'm just going to put in 2505, which is a job for a marketing manager at level 5. And it will pre-populate the, the rest of the columns in terms of the category and the level of the job. We have full job descriptions, and this will be provided once you, once you agree participation with Bradford. And we also collect internal information, so you may have a grading system or referencing your job codes, the job category, so we would collect that, as well as your internal job titles and who they will report to. This helps us when we're matching and reviewing your data. Now for the most important part, of course, it's, it's the compensation piece. So again, we're, we're keeping it very simple. We're collecting cash information. So we will collect your annual base salary. Um, and if you report data in your systems in monthly, that's fine. Um, if you just note the number of months, um, so we'll make a record of that. But we'll collect allowances in terms of car information, any allowances in terms of housing, transport, meal allowance, um, and, or any other type not listed, we'll collect that information. And in terms of the last four columns, really looks at incentives. So is an employee eligible for bonus, yes or no? And then please report last year's bonus as well as current um, bonus within your fiscal years. So that's, that's it. That's really simple. We provide instructions um, as well to help you. Here is a list of jobs, right from CEO right through to your support technicians in your organization. And every job has a job code. And we have the full job descriptions as well available. I'm just going to go back to our presentation. I mean, we've been in the business for 40 years in providing market data to companies. All data is treated in strictest confidence. No company can be identified in terms of what pay. And we report the data very much on an aggregate basis. And the market data is independently arrayed. So no one company can identify a specific company. In terms of next, obviously we're running some webcasts. The next one is on the 28th. And my colleague, Mikhail, will be actually conducting that in, um, in Belarusian. And in terms of next steps, we want to partner with you in terms of really building a, providing market data for the Belarus IT market. And so we're asking companies, if you are interested, if you can sign the survey agreement, hopefully most of you have received that, but I will send that following this webcast, along with a copy of this presentation deck. We'll invite companies to attend training sessions um, throughout August and September, and we can do that by a webcast or one-to-one -one on the phone. That's not a problem. We're collecting data 
um, in August, right through to October. And the plan is to report market data um, in January next year, 2017. Now, this is very much dependent on companies like yourselves who are interested in participating in the survey and submitting data. The more companies we have, the more we can report market data. So that's the plan. If we have enough companies, then we can provide something in October. So it's really dependent on interest and demand. And we're hoping, you know, we've received at least 30 companies who've expressed an interest in participating in the survey. And we hope all those 30 companies um, say yes and submit data. So it's really dependent on market demand. And then, of course, we would like to hold a webcast or an event, hopefully in Belarus, in Minsk, where we'll report trends and what we're seeing in the Belarusian market, um, specifically to the IT sector. So that's, that's uh, to be confirmed. Um, our proposal is we welcome companies like yourselves to participate in this survey. There is no cost in terms of no fee charge for Belarus. However, we run a global survey, and if you would like market data for other companies, you have that option. And here it just lists our fees. But certainly to participate in Belarus for, for year one, it, it is zero, zero cost in terms of zero fee. Um, I'm going to pause now if there's any questions. Um, we've, we've come to the end of our presentation. We finished a bit early. Um, I'm going to pause now if there's any questions. Hopefully you can hear me. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay. We don't have any further questions. I'm going to send a copy of this presentation deck to all um, attendees. Um, and I'll also send you, if you are interested, if you can sign the um, survey agreement, and then we can proceed in terms of training and collecting your data. We very much welcome in partnering with you um, to provide the first snapshot of Belarus. I'm really excited about this project. We've had a, a lot of interest from companies and with a view to providing market data for this sector. So thank you very much for your time. If you have any further questions, here's my contact details. I'm Brenda D'Souza. Feel free to call me or email me, and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.